Good afternoon and welcome to After Hours and we're at the lovely Oceanwood Retreat and joining me is a group of women who do animal massage. And I was just about to say, like you think being in this situation and not on the field with the animals is hard for you, it's hard for me because this is kind of all new for me. So I'm not going to start with all your professionalism yet. Uh, Marta, Liz, Jolena. So when I made contact with Murphy, which is how this happened, and I had elder goats and sheep. The goats had um, genetic arthritis. They're like 16 years old. And somebody's talking about massage. I hadn't even heard of animal massage. I honestly, I hadn't heard of animal massage. How long has it been around and just sort of a historical, is it in Europe, is it new to North America? Talk a bit about it a bit. Maybe Marta, you're the president of the BC Association of Animal Massage and Bodywork Professionals. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So it's been around for a very, very long time, but I would say that it kind of started with horses. Um, so I think in the, and Liz correct me if I'm wrong, but in the equine industry, massage has been around for a long time. Because, because of racehorses maybe? Racehorses, uh, jumpers, you have very expensive horses that take a lot of money to train. Um, they cost a lot of money, so and they make a lot of money. So you want them in tip-top form and you don't want, well, first of all, you don't want them to get injured, so you want to prevent injury. You want them to have a leg up over the competition. So you want them to be in tip-top shape for whatever event they're doing. And you want them to, if it's a quality racehorse or if it's a really good um, jumping horse, you want them to perform as long as possible. So it, it was actually a big deal in, in the equine industry. And I think I, I'm going to assume that pet, uh, a lot of horse owners have dogs, so that kind of probably trickled down. Uh, well, hey, when you're done massaging my horse, <laughs> you massage my dog. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm, I'm that not sure. That still happens. <laughs> Probably, right? Um, and then, and then, of course, uh, you have pet owners going like, oh, well, if it's good for a horse, if it's good for me, why would I be good for my dog? So I think I will go through now just um, your qualifications because you're all certified. There is training out there, just so people know. So Marta, you're the president of the BC Association of Animal Massage and Body Work Professionals, and you're all part of that organization. And you're certified in uh, small and large animal massage. And yes. Reiki. 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 Mm -hmm. And is that for animals as well? I think of it as human. It's both um, for humans and for animals. Okay. And Liz, you're the past. Uh, yeah, I was the president before Marta graciously took over. <laughs> and you've worked with horses. Yes. And certified in large animals. Talk a bit about that. Yes, uh, I started in the horse industry in uh, professionally in 2004, and I was initially a coach and a trainer. Um, and I was encountering behavior problems as a result of pain and discomfort. And so that's when I, I also had a horse that had been a race horse that had a lot of pain, had a lot of body issues. Um, and after some really exciting rides, I wanted to stop doing rides quite that exciting. So um, I, uh, I had a, a, a body worker work on a horse who had stomped me quite badly up in uh, Tom's Lake. And uh, I found out who she trained with. I had one of her colleagues come work on my horse. I saw the results. I saw what it did for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I found their instructor and trained with her. Um, to learn how to do that as well. Primarily at that point it was to save my own skin as a trainer. Um, I didn't want to keep getting hurt and I didn't want to keep asking things of horses that were in pain. Okay. Um, but since then I've, I no longer train horses, I still coach, but my coaching has evolved to be more about 
um, how your ride is affecting your animal's body rather than just look pretty, <laughs> um, which is probably more effective, we hope. Well, I have to admit that I was skeptical at first, partly because I wasn't educated to even know there was such a thing, but I was so impressed with how much you all know the body so well. Like, you were using words, of course, that I wouldn't understand. Talk a bit about that. Part of our training, depending on which course you take, is you have to know the anatomy. So you have to know what's, what you're touching under the skin. And so we visualize it. Um, now, none of us had worked on goats, so we had to go look at what a goat looked like, because they're slightly different than horses, but very similar. I've worked on a couple of goats. Yeah, okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> okay. but you weren't there the first time. I was not so, there the first okay. time, no. And so we were able to, the, the words we were using were the names of the muscles that we were touching mm -hmm. and what we were feeling when we feel a release, we were talking about that too. So um, a big part of your education is you need to know the anatomy and how things work, which is physiology. Doing massage techniques are pretty universal. It doesn't matter whether you're doing a goat or a horse or a pig or a cow or a cat or a dog, it doesn't matter. How about human? Do you know if well, there's that connection? Yeah, the, the techniques are the same. Okay. Um, just different animals and humans, they like different things. Um, so you emphasize different techniques, but the basic techniques doesn't matter. A muscle is a muscle is a muscle. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the same. So we affect the muscles the same. We can't work on people because they're not an animal and they have their own set of people who, who work on them. Association. Yeah, yeah. Certification. Yeah, and besides, who wants to work on a human? <laughs> So, Jelena, so yeah. you're treasurer of the association. Currently, yes. Yeah. Uh, and but you've been everything else in the association, yeah. too. Um, and do you want me to say IEMS? Am I reading that right? J-E-M-S. J -E -M -S. What's that? That's the name of my company. Gem, oh, okay. Gems Animal Massage Services. Okay. So when I first started, I have a diploma in equine massage therapy, which is a two-year full-time college course. Okay. straight on equine massage therapy. That is the gold standard. That's the highest you can get. Um, there's a lot of little shorter courses, which doesn't mean that you don't have good education. It's just not as intense. intense yeah. Um, and so for my dogs, I'm just certified in them, which is a shorter course. Okay, yeah. so what does it take for certification? Like, do you go to school? Do you? Yeah. yeah. Talk a bit about that. Group, come on, group. You guys are always talking. Come on. Um, well, it depends which school you go to. Yeah. There, there are many. Um, I guess in BC, there's mostly equine, there's equine. schools. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware of any canine massage school. So most of the members um, in our association went to Northwest School of Animal Massage. And they certify in both small and large animal massage, and that's where I got my two certifications. And they have um, three levels. There's the maintenance, um, sport, and rehab. And I would say each level takes about a year to complete. You have the theoretical portion, you have the practical portion, then you have your case studies. Um, and after that, you receive your certification and you do that, you know, I, I would say some people feel that they can practice after just doing level one, the maintenance massage. But definitely, I think most two. of us At have either two. two or three um, levels of training. And then there's some equine schools that the, the people that mostly primarily work on horses did here in BC. There's there's some of us that kind of wing it and mush our education together from various places. Um, both yeah. of these ladies have done years of oh, college continue, education. Yeah, continuing education. And yeah, uh, mine, I built it as is. So I did take a specialized course in, I believe my certificate is equine therapist, which Okay. Sounds like lay on the couch and tell me about your mother. <laughs> so I don't use that title um, okay. because it doesn't describe what I do. 
Um, and it was a shorter course. It was I never one of the. My father. I never met. I didn't. He didn't love me. Um, <laughs> my father was a racehorse. He never came home. Um, <laughs> and that's what I took after I'd taken uh, two or three years of courses in equine science and anatomy and exercise physiology because of the training I was doing. And so I built the bodywork career out of the sports yeah. stuff that I was doing with horses, um, which is, is a way to ladder it in there. Um, but, you know, I look at the stuff you guys have done, my yeah. mind is a little blown. So why is, how did this association start? Why did it okay. start? Well, I'm actually one of the founding members. Okay. Um, so back in mm, around 2007, I, I've been practicing since 2000, so I was working on horses. Didn't know what I was doing. Finally ran into a couple of other practitioners, and we used to meet up for little coffees every couple of months just to, you know, go, okay, how do we fix this problem? And, you know, trying to do that. And then we were running into some issues with um, just legitimacy because it nothing existed, right? This is this at that time was kind of a, it's a brand new career. Governments don't even know, they recognize it as a career option. Um, and so when we're talking to some vets, they said, oh, go in and talk to, um, we went to talk to the vet association at that time and had a great meeting and everything. And they basically said that you need to create something formal so that you have a more united voice. Um, and so that's, and then it took a couple years to get all the paperwork and bylaws and all that stuff done. And so in 2009, we became a, a nonprofit association for, um, animal massage in BC. And we've been so, doing it since then. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. the vet, the vet association or vets, yeah. they're, they were supported, obviously. At the time, supported. yes. They'd have different management in now and it's not quite as rosy as it was. But the vets on the ground are very supportive of what we do. Um, we all work collaboratively with our vets in that, you know, if something Injury-wise come by, we need a diagnosis and permission from the vets to work on the animal. And then if we see anything that doesn't fit that, we send them back. And so we have this back and forth with um, relationship. the relationship with the, the vets. And um, it's it's fantastic. Like, well, that's that a way, good thing. Yes, it's a very good thing. Because I was wondering, like, it wasn't until mid-90s I was talking to yeah. a woman that midwives weren't allowed to do what they were doing even though they, it's no. been around for yeah, forever right. ever so in terms of that like legal obligation are you like what's your protection i guess <laughs> it's a gray area for sure um we are currently and by we uh it is a group of other um animal professionals that includes chiropractors and it includes traditional Chinese medicine practitioners, uh, physiotherapists. So we got together and we are working towards um, creating regulation because mm -hmm. as it stands right now, anyone can say, I'll massage your dog. And it, it, it is a danger to the dog and the public. And we want to make sure that only qualified, certified, insured people are able to say, I'm an animal massage professional and I can work on your animal. Right now, there's just no legal environment um, that would support that structure. But hopefully, hopefully we will see this happen really soon. Uh, we're working with the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, of course, right now that's on hold given the current tragic events. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So COVID delayed the progress, the current events are obviously delaying the progress. But I would say five years into working mm -hmm. on a collaborative solution between um, us practitioners not just massage practitioners, but also other um, animal, practici practitioners. animal practitioners, as well as the government and the vet board. So hopefully one more year and we will have something uh, like a legal framework. Right, something that sort of legitimizes yeah. it. It's kind of, well, it's like 
chiropractic massage therapists for humans mm. have had to take steps yeah. to absolutely and it's get recognized. Yeah. 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 Some of the members of one of our group associations, which is uh, it's the BC Animal Owners Association, and some of them I think were involved in, in the human world for the massage yeah. and chiropractor. And so they've been um, very, very much at the front of the cow catcher on this agenda where they're, they've been through it with the human industries and now they want to see it happen with the animal industries and it's, it's more familiar to them. So mm -hmm. they're, they're a really big driving force for mm -hmm. that for us. Um, and they've helped, you know, rally together a bunch of groups of sort of people that don't tend to rally well. <laughs> this is a solitary profession. We're all sort of introverted, you know, kind of not oh, I see. super yes. party people. Like we don't, you know, big groups of body workers don't roam the countryside. <laughs> and when we get together, we're all kind of the, the kids at the back of the class, not wanting to put our hand up. So it's a, it's a tough group of people to get to mm -hmm. respond to an email as a president or um, to, to get them on board with something, mm -hmm. even when it's something we all want. We all want. It's absolutely. really tough to get you know people to show up and be counted for it. So I wanted to bring um, have a discussion about uh, when you came and met um, my ghost and she, Ringo Starr, Garbanzo Jean, bless his heart, and Jody, um, and of course. You were strangers and they reacted and how what change happened to them i saw well first of all in the massage process when you were talking about releases just discuss that a little bit because they were burping and blipping talk a bit about that and how that feels to you as therapists when it's working i guess yeah, that's a tough um, question. Well, I'll, I'll take that one on. It's 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 an incredible feeling. There's a shift in energy. There, there There's that shift. And when you said they responded to us, at first, they didn't know who we are. They didn't know what was going on. It was all very foreign. Um, they were definitely on guard. Well, they're prey animals. Of course, they were on guard. And then once you start working, they will kind of that anxiety revs up, revs up. And you get your first release mm -hmm. and you go like oh i felt that and then they go like whoa i felt that and and you just go in sync with their body and it's 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 a beautiful beautiful experience when you work and then you start seeing the releases um in this case um you would see a lot of kind of chewing and burping and farting and all sorts of things but but on top of those physiological responses there's just that shift of you know you see those eyes glazing over and they're starting to relax they're starting to trust their body starts opening up under your hands and they kind of invite you deeper in and then oh, you yeah, I guess that was I was I'm listening to how do you judge like where to go and how to go and what can you tell <laughs> what can you tell about the body as you're starting it that's like, I, I think yeah. most of us do do body work we see with our hands mm -hmm. and so there's it's difficult to explain from an outward perspective what's happening mm -hmm. between my hands and the body I'm working on yeah. um, there is like when you feel a release happen it's almost like you were holding your breath and you didn't notice and then oh, yes. and then you've let it go and oh I can breathe again and so there is there's a tactile shift that happens under your fingers when a release happens and an animal starts to go oh, oh i feel better now and they can make that association between i let this weird stranger that just walked in here and started poking me where it hurts put hands on me and now i feel better and they were a part of that mm -hmm. and there is mm -hmm. there's a moment where the animal says okay like i'm i trust you and i'm gonna let you carry on here and you can feel it under your fingers. And so where do we go? We go where the tension is. Um, and it's it's really difficult to kind of give you a roadmap for where I would go, because every mm -hmm. animal is different. To feel so it Jody, for example, I've never worked on a sheep before I met Jody. I've worked on goats, cows, pigs, horses, cats, dogs, never a chicken, but it came close. Uh, <laughs> but a sheep was completely new to me. I don't know what an angry sheep looks like. I don't know what a relaxed sheep looks like. Mm -hmm. And I felt she was very tolerant of us, and you guys had seen mm -hmm. her once before I, I showed yeah. up. Um, but I didn't really feel like she was super involved with the experience. She was kind of tolerating mm -hmm. us because she's mm -hmm. a good sheep and she'll do that. Um, but the last time I was here, which was I think last month, 
where yeah. I found a spot that she really needed some help and she nobody was holding her and she just about knocked me over backing up into my yes. hands. Yeah. That was what which an incredible just made moment. my day. It's like, yeah. Give yeah. it to a <laughs> yeah, she's right touch. there. Yeah. And and so for her to that was what, four or five sessions in yeah. we've done with her. Right. And so and I haven't been there for every one of them. Um, but for her to say, okay, these weirdos that show up once a month, they come and feed me lots of bananas and, you know, hang out in the pen for a while. Maybe they're not so bad to the point where I no longer need you to restrain me. Now I'm going to ask for that. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, what did, did I, how did I find that spot? Well, I put hands on her and that was the place that said, you know, work here. And then her response says, do more. Um, and, and I think Ringo was the same the second time we were here and he's you know in the shoulders and my brain says this, this animal is moving this way and so these places are going to be sore but my hands and, and the animal himself says but that's not what hurts it's actually over here so when I looked at him I said okay your, your lumbar spine is going to hurt um, mm -hmm. your, your lower back right your shoulders um, but the places he took me weren't always those places and it is a matter of, of following your hands and feeling which isn't it's not easy to explain that yeah. to an outsider. Well, I saw it of, yeah. of, of sorts. And you, you pay attention to the spine, I've noticed. And you sort of know when there's, I forget what words you used for it, almost like it, to me, it sounded like it clicked out in, in, in the right way, mm -hmm. like it moved in the right way. I yeah, that would be to the restriction. Yeah, that might be more what um, Liz was doing because she does a little more. It's a different technique than the rest of us have been taught. Um, and so it sounds more like it was, we kind of use the words adjust, but that's not really what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're setting the body up to reset itself. So basically Whereas, when you're yeah. releasing tension, right? So yeah. when you have a joint and the muscles are pulling it out of alignment, we don't work with joints but we release the muscle and then, then the, joint, the joint realigns itself. Yes. So without any uh, help from us, in the sense we don't do any thrusts, we don't do any adjustments, we just work on the muscle, but then the muscle releasing just allows for better alignment in the body. Mm -hmm. And very much the animals relax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you thought, oh, they're just gonna go to bed now. <laughs> yeah. Jody would glaze over and move her head. Ringo was like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And what are the signs when, because you were very aware to me of when they had had enough. Never mind if they ran. <laughs> that's, 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 the big one. that's the big one. <laughs> but, but, the, but there were subtle things there too. Basically, it's they start to get, so you get to the point where they've relaxed, so they're, they're into it, and all of a sudden they're like, yeah, it don't really and they start fussing again and, and it's a spot that you've released so it's not something that still needs work and they're like yeah I just don't want to be touched anymore and it's 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 very subtle it's like ear posture it's I like how hard like what they're looking at you know tension in their mouths it's it's very subtle we also feel it in our hands that they're just they're not shifting into what you're doing they're kind of going away from it now mm -hmm. they're like I'm just done but yeah. every every yeah. animal, like every person, yeah. is different. Yeah. So the threshold for I can tolerate this much is not the same for every animal on every day, yeah. or for every species, for every individual, yeah. um, and and each one will express themselves differently. So if I if I worked on Jody for an hour last time and she'd ever let me work on her for an hour, um, and then next time I show up she's like you've got five minutes. You know that's I have mm -hmm. to respect that. Yeah. Um, from a behavior span standpoint, you know even even folks without any background in training will get to know an, an animal, an individual, and say okay the behavior has changed, and it's starting to escalate. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is a sign that the animal is like, you're not listening. Yeah. I need to be louder. I've had enough, which is when they run away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And but very much, you all pay very much attention. Like uh, Ringo, who has severe arthritis on, I call it her knees. And certain places just weren't going to be touched. Yeah. And very aware. I was so amazed that you were... So respect. Well, why shouldn't you be? But you know what I mean. Very respectful. Of that is how we build the relationship with the animal. Is that they learn that they're part of the process, and that when they say no, we listen. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that gives us trust, and that maybe next time they'll let us touch it a little bit. So that's how uh, 
that's part of building the relationship. So you so okay, we know that Ringo is on his knees, so he's got the L-shaped back. We know that his hamstrings are gonna be really tight. So you go over and well, you go to touch him and he, he really shifted away, You're like, okay, he says no, you go back to something he likes. You can try that a couple times. If he really says no, you're like, okay, we'll leave that. We'll try it again, maybe next time. But by, by listening to them say no, they will eventually say yes. So that's because then they're like, oh, you're not gonna hurt me. You, this does make things better. So, okay, now I'm ready for you to try this. And they may give you 30 seconds of, mm -hmm. you can touch this for 30 seconds. Oh, that's too much. Okay, move back away. And we do that with all the animals. It's um, well, building it's this, yeah, you've got to build the relationship and the trust. And I know with my dogs, most dogs get it mostly by the end of the first session, definitely in the second. I had one dog, it took six sessions before they're like, oh, I get it, you do listen. And then we were able to really get into what the problems were, as opposed to just dealing with the surface issues. But it does, it, you have to build that trust. How is it different with dogs? Are dogs any different than sort of the bigger animals? Dogs, cats? I, I'd say they are, but these guys have more experience well, with the smaller animals. So. I was going to say the biggest difference is that dogs are not prey animals. So oh, um, with the prey like animals, if you push them too hard, they go into the fight or flight mode and flight if is the first reaction. Is they'll pull away, they'll run away. Um, and then if you don't let them do that, that's when they bite and they kick it. Yeah. 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 Um, dogs are um, predators. So they're more like us. So we have a closer relationship in how we respond. Like it's easier. Um, we, we're not seen as predators where the prey animals see us as predators until we learn their trust. And so it's their first response usually isn't to run away. It's to give you the little growl and the, mm -hmm. the air snap is, is usually if you've really hit a sore spot like, mm -hmm. and you haven't earned the trust yet. They eventually learn that you listen and then they will just give you a look. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you get, you get that look. You're like, okay, we're going off that spot. <laughs> Um, so you don't escalate it with them. So it is a slightly different mindset with them, but the basic premise is the same. You build the trust and then you can work in the sore spots. Yeah. So, that's so do you guys have any relationships? Like how do you find the animals that you treat and do vets actually communicate with you that there might be an animal that needs massage therapy or whatever. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, um, in my case, I uh, work in a vet clinic and I also work in my private practice. So mm -hmm. um, I get, of course, at the vet clinic, I work on their patients. Um, in my private practice, it's mostly um, word of mouth some vet referrals, um, I would say some social media, but definitely word of mouth and vet referrals are the main way um, dogs or horses find their way to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I get um, uh, a very few directly from vets, mostly word of mouth, but often it's um, clients consulting with each other with vets. I've had vets contact me uh, that have a a patient that we've both worked on and they've seen improvement they want to know what's going on to inform um, what's mm -hmm. happening and uh, you know any new client with a, any kind of injury or an unknown medical diagnosis they're referred to a veterinarian who has the expertise to diagnose to mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. those distinctions to decide if it's safe to do massage on this animal without causing further damage I don't know that there are many vets that um, that I've dealt with that have referred directly but I have had lots of clients who call me who said, my vet says, I, you know, my horse might benefit from this. Um, and then they're looking to their community and who, who recommends who for mm -hmm. this work. And I think every modality, because every, every animal is different, every modality is specific to the animal, just like people. So my body doesn't enjoy chiropractic. It doesn't do well for it. Mm -hmm. And certain types of massage I don't enjoy. They're not therapeutic. 
animals are the same. So what I do might benefit this animal, but the next one might really hate it. <laughs> and it's not that the modality is not a good one, it's that it doesn't work for that individual. And so mm -hmm. you have so many people who practice so many different things, which is great because you know, I tell my, my clients, if, if this works, then let's continue. And if it doesn't, spend your money where it's useful and help the animal get what it needs. And that's, that's usually the best way. But word of mouth, I think 95% of my business is word of mouth between customers. Right? So um, how many people are part of the association? Good question. <laughs> oh, not many. It's, no. Oh, it's a, it's, it's, it's a cooperative it's, it's, run, too. That was the other yeah, thing so I was wondering I'm about. I'm going to say just under 20, yeah, I think, is where we're at. Which is up from where it's been. Yeah, it so fluctuates sort of between and 15 so and 20, we, yeah. But even so, yeah. 20, that's yeah. different skills, different whatever. And you trade information. Yep. You guys are always talking about various things. Yeah, yeah that was absolutely. one of the really cool things about this initiative yeah. is that I got to see... Because the first time, they were not going to let us touch them. So we had Marta do mostly Reiki. Um, a my little bit. Oh, myofascial release. No, sorry, myofascial release. My fashion my fashion so, yeah. So there was, but it was, it's a very slow, mm -hmm. gentle touch, which is different than from what I do. And then we had Liz do her little, I'm going to say adjustment things. <laughs> the thing that Liz does, <laughs> the whatever thing that Liz does. <laughs> But it's a totally different technique. So it's really cool that I got to see them. And how they practice. And then mine is more traditional Swedish massage. And so that's when I do like the gliding strokes. And you've seen that. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives a totally different response from the animals. It's, it's, so it's really cool being able to show different techniques. But her technique will be different than mine. Because she finds the things that work for her. And I find the things that work for me, and we kind of all end up with our own little techniques. Well, our, our own bodies, right? Like, yeah. my body never yeah. has a day that it doesn't have some pain. Yeah. So there's a lot of days that I can't do the technique the way I was taught. And I have to work around my own body's limitations yeah. to get the job done. And so to, to be in a collaborative situation mm -hmm. like this, where, like, normally, you know, we're, we're solitary animals, and now we're kind of a herd working on these goats <laughs> and these sheep. And it's it's... It's interesting because that doesn't happen for no. us, right? We we hear about other professionals. You know, I'll meet a horse and oh, he tried to kick the last massage there. <laughs> was trying to you know watch your feet, right? Like, yeah. well, what did they do? I don't get to see what happened with that right. person. I don't know if the person's technique was the problem. I don't know if if their mm -hmm. manner was the problem. Um, I don't know what worked for them. I don't know if the owner just lost their mind because they didn't like that person, and then the horse picks up on it. Like I don't know any of those things. Yeah. And so to be able to see other practitioners while we're chatting, yeah. <laughs> work on an animal that I may or may not have any information on is really interesting because we don't get those opportunities. We don't yeah. travel in herds. Yeah. But when we do, you know, it's it's a really interesting thing to see and to have those discussions about well, what did you do there and why did that happen, right? Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, it's been a really good, ex well, it's been a great experience for Jody, Ringo Starr, and poor Garbanzo V, yeah. and for me too, like, you know, yeah. uh, to be a little skeptical and to see them feel good, and just listening to you guys yeah. talk and all kinds of things come up, and learned a lot, it was, it's been really great. We're very really thankful to have the opportunity. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it was absolutely such a pleasure. Yeah, it's it's super fun. God, to it was so nice to see Jody oh my just God. Stick, just I want my turn now. Yeah, <laughs> I want my turn now. It was perfect. That probably made my whole month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was really was surprising. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the Ocean Wood Retreat, and thank you for joining us.